It's feeding time for the gorillas at the North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro. Keepers distribute fruits and greens throughout the enclosure, and the gorillas have a lunch that takes them back to Africa. Recently, we have converted our gorilla diet from a standard traditional diet to basically a greens-based diet, which is more like their diet in the wild. Part of that old diet was primate biscuits, which provided nutrition but would have been completely foreign to gorillas in the wild. They responded well to the change. It's showing having a positive effect on their blood work and on their heart health. Gorillas represent just one of a number of species kept at the North Carolina Zoo. The zoo is basically divided into two parts, North America region and Africa region. Altogether, we have uh, about 1,100 animals representing about 250 species. The population of animals is large and varied. With that comes a plethora of dietary needs. It's a real demand on the commissary folks to, to get the diets for these animals. You can imagine the, the totally different kinds of, of diets that they have to prepare each day, sometimes twice a day. Quite a challenge for them. Here is a primate diet close up. Kale, celery, Swiss chard, green collards, and romaines in there. That food is prepared daily in the five-person commissary, which sees to the nutritional needs of nearly all of the zoo's inhabitants. We prepare about 125 individual or group diets a day, and there's probably about 500 different components of the diets that go out. We have recipes that all the staff follows. Every item is weighed. There is a long list of reasons for all the food that is given to each animal being weighed. If an animal is uh, not feeling well and maybe not eating enough or eating all of its diet, we can determine that. If it eats it all, then we know to increase it a little bit. Dietary science has progressed greatly through the years. The place that zoos have landed is to provide their animals with food that is as close to what they would eat on their home turf as possible. There are researchers and have been for years who studied animal diets in the wild and all zoos try to mimic that as close as we can. We have primarily a, a lot of variety of fresh fruits and vegetables that go in the primate diets, the bear diets, the bird diets. To give the animals what they want and need, the North Carolina Zoo reaches out to a number of locations to complete the menu. We get all of our rodents and uh, our prey items from uh, Indiana. Our produce we get locally from uh, a market here in Asheboro. Our meat we get from uh, Toronto and also from Nebraska. All of the effort and attention yields a diet that is both nutritious and satisfying. Absolutely, the animals do eat very well here. Acceptability is a good way of determining whether they enjoy the diet or not. The North Carolina Zoo is expansive, providing plenty of space for each of the 250 species of animals. And if a visitor is so inclined, they can walk more than five miles of trail to see them all. The North Carolina Zoo is one of the largest zoos in the country, and it's the largest walk-through zoo. Pretty much every zoo now exhibits animals in enclosures such as these, but it wasn't always like that. The North Carolina Zoo was groundbreaking in that regard. Here at the North Carolina Zoo, we were the first to be built from its inception as the natural habitat zoo. It's a nice opportunity for people that might not otherwise know how an animal lives, really, to see uh, about as close as they're going to see in this country to how that animal really lives. It's a good opportunity for people to see animals much as they would exist in the wild. And the reason that's important is for them to be educated and become champions for all animals. We always feel that when they come here and are, are close to the animals, it'll carry over in, into their daily lives and, and just in the way they treat animals uh, domestically, too. Keepers here care deeply for the animals under their watch. Feeding is just a part of that, but not an inexpensive component. Last year, I believe we spent about $435,000, $40,000 on food for our animals. There are possibly ways to cut costs on feeding, but that wouldn't be as good for the animals. So we want to provide the highest quality and most nutritious, complete diet that we can. 
In addition to what they eat, there are differences in when the animals eat. There are some which are only fed once a week or even once a month. Primarily, though, food is provided a couple of times each day. Most of our animals are fed twice a day. The keepers do that so they can get the animals on exhibit or they can bring them off exhibit at night. It's a lot of expense and a lot of work keeping all of the animals well nourished. There aren't any complaints here, though. Keepers at a zoo are generally animal lovers in the first place, so providing for them in such a way tends to be a pleasure. What we do directly has a huge impact on each animal. I don't know of anything I would have rather done than to work at a zoo. I've really enjoyed it.